Donkey Kong has been around for a while, and in that time, his voice has changed a lot from a realistic ape <laughs> to a cartoon chimp okay. to something straight out of Scooby Doo. <laughs> So, why on earth does Nintendo keep changing how this guy sounds? Well, the answer to that question is more complicated than it might first seem, but I've done my best to untangle the web. So, let's answer the question, why doesn't Donkey Kong sound like he used to? So, in the very, very early days, Donkey Kong just made this kind of grating beep sound. I guess it's meant to sound like a laugh, but the hardware back then didn't allow for much expression when it came to audio. For the next 15 years, Nintendo had Donkey Kong keep quiet in all the video games they produced. A beep here and there, that was all the noise Donkey Kong made. In the games, that is. Meanwhile, on television, things were very different. Throughout the 80s and 90s, there were a number of TV shows featuring Donkey Kong, and there was essentially zero consistency here when it came to the voices. Soupy Sales voiced DK in Saturday Supercade. Oh, well, well, oh, gumbo holes. <laughs> Then Gary Chalk took on the role for Captain N, the Game Master. Huh? What are you doing here? And finally, for the Canadian show based on Donkey Kong Country, Richard Yearwood provides DK with his speaking voice. Hey, Diddy! Come on up, little buddy! While Sterling Jarvis sings all of Donkey Kong's songs. Now, Donkey Kong Country was also dubbed into French and Japanese, but we're going to leave those aside for now. So, as you can see, there was zero continuity between any of these voices. Each time a new Donkey Kong show was produced, the production team just picked a random voice actor, someone who they figured fit the role. But then, in 1996, everything changed, and it was all down to one little game, Mario Kart 64. For the first time in the series, the team developing Mario Kart 64 decided to include voice acting for their characters. Now, for most of the cast, this meant hiring human voice actors, as you'd expect. But for two racers, Bowser and Donkey Kong, Nintendo went with a different approach. They used sound effect libraries. Sound effect libraries are huge collections of sound effects, usually packed onto CD-ROMs. A lot of these sound effects were originally recorded for classic cartoons like Tom and Jerry or Looney Tunes. Nevertheless, these sounds still appear in blockbuster movies to this very day. So, rather than hiring a human to play Donkey Kong in Mario Kart, the developers had a look through various sound effect libraries to find the perfect gorilla noise they could use. They eventually came across one particular sound, called Hollywood Edge Chimpanzee Screech P0026201. <laughs> Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> now, the sound is over a minute long, but that first part is the most important. When sound programmer Taro Bando heard this long screech, he decided to include it as the voice of Donkey Kong. Of course, he couldn't play the whole sound, so he chopped it up into a few short snippets and then played them back randomly at different pitches. That explains the slightly robotic sound. Here's the final result. <laughs> Even if you haven't played Mario Kart 64, you might recognise the sound of that. And that's because Nintendo kept using that exact same sound in a bunch of games following. Mario Tennis, Mario Party 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, all the way up to 7. And then, in the Super Smash Bros series, they used the last part of that audio sample for Diddy Kong's voice, to this very day. 
So for a while, it looked like Nintendo were going to keep going down that realistic gorilla path, with the help of some sample libraries. But then, in 1999, a bunch of Brits completely changed things up. You've almost certainly heard of Rare before, the British developers of Banjo-Kazooie, Goldeneye for the N64, and most importantly, the three Donkey Kong Country games for the Super Nintendo. A few years after that, the company started developing a follow-up to those Donkey Kong games, this time for the Nintendo 64. Just like with Mario Kart, Rare decided to include voice acting for Donkey Kong. However, the company took a different approach to Nintendo. Instead of using pre-existing sound effects, they would record their own. And rather than hiring professional voice actors, they just used developers at the company. But here's the thing, the end credits don't actually credit any of the voice actors. So for a fairly long time, it wasn't known who provided the voice of Donkey Kong. It was almost certainly a developer at Rare, but who? Well, around the year 2010, the game's composer Grant Kirkhope added a new page to his website, which said this. On the sound design front, I can reveal that I was the voice of Donkey Kong. Yes, it's me. So, in the middle of writing all of the game's music, Kirkhope got out his microphone and proceeded to make all kinds of grunts and growls. The thing about doing the voice for DK was, as much of the voices were back in the day, I did them because no one else wanted to do it. I did it in my office by myself, quickly with a mic, just took him in, right, done, onto the next thing, because no one wanted to do it. You know, I just, I just did it in a low voice and then pitched it down a bit. So here's how that ended up sounding. Okay. Hey. By the way, Grant Kirkhope actually kept a backup of all the sound effects from Donkey Kong 64 on his computer. He showed off some of this collection on Twitter. Take a look. I thought I'd have a look through some of the DK stuff, <clears throat> sound effects, since it's his 40th birthday, and I found a few of these. Backflip. Backflip? Noise itself plus landings, like a... Huh? <laughs> 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 What's this? Ah, banana. Banana. <laughs> But going back to 1999, Grant Kirkhope received a message shortly after the game's release from Nintendo. They wanted him to send them the sound effects he recorded for Donkey Kong. Grant was, uh, surprised. When Nintendo asked for the samples, I couldn't believe it. Like, it was like, what, you really, you want, you want to use this? You know, we thought they were totally shit. But dutifully, Grant Kirkhope sent the audio clips over to Nintendo. And before long, they started popping up in all kinds of Mario games, like Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, Bye. Mario Kart Double Dash, okay. Mario vs Donkey Kong, uh. and even the Game Boy Advance version of Donkey Kong Country. By now, Donkey Kong's voice was pretty solidified. When people thought of Donkey Kong, this was the voice they heard in their head. Cool. So of course, it would only make sense for Nintendo to go and change it wouldn't it? <sighs> okay, we need to quickly divert back to the 1990s. You'll see why. It all starts with an unexpected game, Ocarina of Time. Yeah, the Zelda game. This was the first big Legend of Zelda game to feature voice acting, so Nintendo had to go through all the characters and pick who would provide their voice. At the time, there was a voice actor in the world of anime called Takashi Nagasako. Most people probably wouldn't recognise his name. He wasn't famous like that. But whenever some director needed a brute of the week or some kind of one-off villain for their show, Takashi Nagasako was often their go-to guy. And so Nintendo decided to follow in their footsteps and hire Nagasako to play the game's villain, Ganondorf. So Takashi Nagasako headed to the recording studio and recorded this. <laughs> For a while, that was the end of the connection between Nintendo and Nagasako. But then, in the year 2004, Nintendo decided to hire him once more, this time to take over Donkey Kong's voice. In other words, Grant Kirkhope's DK was gone. Sorry, Grant. 
Now, Nintendo have never talked about why they replaced Grant Kirkhope in the role, but I have a pretty strong theory. Just two years earlier, in 2002, Rare was infamously bought out by Microsoft, Nintendo's close competitor. After that point, Rare's games began being published on Microsoft's own consoles rather than Nintendo's. That meant Grant Kirkhope was an employee of Microsoft. So, while Nintendo could just keep reusing those sound effects that Grant had sent them in 1999, if they ever needed any new sounds, there wasn't really anything they could do. Maybe they could ask Microsoft if they could temporarily hire Grant Kirkhope for this one task, but who knows what the response would be. Now, Grant Kirkhope would later leave Rare and go freelance, but that wasn't for at least six years. So after this buyout in 2002, Nintendo decided it would be easiest to pick a new voice for the Kong. And they went with Takashi Nagasako. In October, the first game featuring his voice was released, Mario Power Tennis. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> So, since then, almost every Donkey Kong game has featured Takashi Nagasako's voice. However, there are a couple of exceptions. First off, none of the Super Smash Bros games feature voice acting for DK. Instead, realistic gorilla sounds are used. It's not currently known where these gorilla sounds came from. They're definitely not the same sample as the one from the 90s Nintendo games. So, for now, this is a bit of a mystery. But here's what it sounds like. And then the other exception comes in a couple of obscure games, Mario Kart Arcade GP 1 and 2. These are arcade versions of Mario Kart, and oddly, both of them feature Grant Kirkhope's voice for Donkey Kong. The reason why is actually pretty simple though. The games are just modified versions of Mario Kart Double Dash, and a lot of the assets were just straight up copied across from the original game including almost all of the sound effects. And yes, that includes Donkey Kong's voice. But apart from a couple of one-off oddities, Takashi Nagasako has continued to voice Donkey Kong in the Mario series up until this day. And unlike Grant Kirkhope, who as far as we know only recorded that original set of sound effects, which were just reused, Takashi Nagasako has returned to the recording studio on multiple occasions to record new voice clips for Donkey Kong. And so, if you go and play, for instance, Mario Golf Super Rush, then it's no surprise whose voice you'll hear. <laughs> As for which voice you prefer, well, this is quite a divisive topic. People have very strong opinions about which voice they think is the true voice of Donkey Kong. But at the end of the day, they're all just different flavours of the character. And I think it's always nice to have a bit of variety, don't you think? Oh, and if you're interested in some of the other Mario characters, I've talked about why Peach, Bowser, Toad and Luigi don't sound like they used to. I'll leave the Toad video on screen, but the rest are in the description. And thank you for watching! I've been having so much fun with YouTube lately, and I literally couldn't be doing this without you. So thanks for your support, it means a lot, and I'll see you next week. Bye!